Hey guys, so today I thought I'd make a video on this type of carburetor. This is the engine that's on my little mini tractor. I know I ain't done much with it. I made a couple videos on it. And I just ain't had a lot of time, but I figured to uh, kill two birds with one stone and make a video on this type of carburetor. And it'll be another video for the mini tractor project. Because this engine will fire right up and it runs pretty good as you've seen in that other video. But I did have to clean this carburetor when I first got it. I figured I'd just go ahead and make a quick video on uh, how to clean how to clean or rebuild this type of carburetor and this is the old Briggs and Stratton uh, updraft carburetor they call it updraft because uh, well, as you can see that it goes up like that the air and fuel mixture which is uh, quite a, which is a lot different compared to other types of carburetors Briggs had I'm also going to talk about the aftermarket carburetors that you can find on eBay real cheap we won't talk more about that, but uh, let's do a close-up of it here. But you can see this is actually a, a two-piece carburetor. You can either take it loose on the block here or take these two bolts out, which is what I'm going to do. And uh, there's several different variations on this type of carburetor. And uh, you see down here is your choke. This is your throttle. It's missing the throttle linkage that would uh, connect right here on that arm. It would run down to the, the top hole in that governor arm there. This is an old cast iron block. I want to get this muffler out, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. <laughs> Your 716th drive bolt. You can see that's all that holds the carburetor on. <laughs> Like I said, ordinarily you'd have your uh, throttle linkage you would run from here down to this arm, but it's currently missing on this one. Now I'll go ahead and talk about, the, like I said, it always pays to double check your uh, model numbers and your part numbers. This is what I ordered. I didn't need it for this, it's just such a good buy, I just picked it up. And you can just tell by looking at it, it's different. I was hoping that the only difference was it didn't have this piece built in, but this must be the medium size updraft because it's actually quite a bit uh, smaller as you can see the holes won't line up so this won't work on that particular engine but it's such a good deal i don't you know i'll use it for something i always wanted to take one of these and put it on a, a vertical shaft engine because they're mainly seen on a horizontal shaft i thought that'd be neat to make a special adapter or pipe come off like this going on to it we might do later on but it's still a good buy and it's always like i said 16 dollars off ebay and uh one thing to note though the holes in this are metric instead of standard so this the bolt that came out won't thread into this you have to use a metric bolt but like i said I'm, i don't feel like i'm out of anything because it you know it didn't cost a whole lot and this is another good point if you need to uh, work on your choke plate for some reason on this type, it ain't no problem. It's right there. But on this type, you got basically the same thing going on. But you have to remove this welsh plug on the back to get access to it. Which we're not going to do in the video. But you remove this plug, and you basically get to... You're looking into it about like that. So that's a, you know, just another difference between this type and this type. Now there is an aftermarket identical to this. It's uh, $30, which still ain't bad, and I might consider buying one just so I get a backup for it. But, uh, like I said, the motor's running good on this one, so we're just going to take it apart and uh, just to show you all the parts inside it and how to clean it and rebuild one of these. Another thing we'll uh, briefly talk about is the uh, adjustment screws on these. And we'll just use the new one, it'll be easier to see. So these two are very similar as far as the mixture screws goes. And you can see this one got the right on the bottom of the bowl. This one's right here. This is your main main slash high uh, fuel mixture screw. And obviously this is your idle speed screw, just like this one is here. And on the top of this one, and on the top right here, this is your idle mixture adjustment screw. And if you if you're lost and the engine don't want to run, screw these. All the way in until it just barely bottoms out. You don't want to force it or you mess it up. And turn them out two turns. That's both of them. And that usually gets it running. 
you can tune it from there. I got a video on how to tune this one piece flow jet and uh, I'll put it in up here because they both all all these carburetors are just basically the same just a different form of the same carburetor pretty much these are typically found on the horizontal shaft engine and these are found on vertical shaft engines which is what I was saying I want to convert one of these to work on the engine that this is designed for you see it bolts on different I just think it'd be something neat to do which we might do later on but anyway let's get to cleaning this one and we'll uh, go from there Okay, so the first thing you want to do is remove these four 5 sixteenth drive bolts. Nut driver is perfect for doing stuff like this. You can also use a ratchet and socket if you want, but you'll usually get too loose for the ratchet to ratchet, so just do that. Another difference between this one and the aftermarket one I ordered is, uh, which, this one's only three bolts. Like I said, I had this one apart before, and it's a, uh, it's running good right now. I just wanted to make a video on how to clean this type of carburetor because uh, I don't have any uh, videos on this uh, type of carburetor and on that type of engine as well. These are uh, very good carburetors, very reliable. And that gasket don't tear or nothing. It's actually easier to remove that jet first because it goes in at an angle like this. And that's probably what's hanging up. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. That's your high main idle mixture screw and your jet or nozzle. And your jet is down in here, and you may or may not be able to remove it, but we'll try. This one's actually coming out surprisingly. A lot of times it'll get stuck in there. Is that aluminum oxidizes? This one's actually coming out. I'm looking at it, it might actually need clean because it's been sitting for about a year, but I didn't leave gas in it. See what I was saying? That goes all the way in there like that. This is your uh, nozzle. I call it a jet earlier, but it's actually a, a nozzle or emulsion tube because it goes through the emulsion tube on this. The gasket's trying to tear. The gasket separated just a little bit, but it did that last time I had it apart and it didn't leak or nothing. So for right now, we'll be putting it back together with the same gasket because I don't have one for it. You can see this one has the metal float. I took that aftermarket on the part and it had a plastic flow, which doesn't really matter. You can see how the needle needle valve is. As long as this is sitting level and sealing, you don't have to mess with it. It's working fine, so we're just going to leave that alone. No need to mess with it if it's working. This is the, as I said, the idle mixture adjustment screw. You want to take this out just for cleaning purposes and to see if it needs replaced. See, it looks pretty smooth. If you see a lot of lines or score marks on this, this needs to be changed because it allows it don't allow it to adjust in properly. You can take a just a little tiny bit of a like a 500 grit sandpaper and go like this with it and dress that up just a little bit but you usually don't have to do that and you can see the, the bowl needs cleaned out just a little bit it's probably corrosion you can see where I scraped on it before but uh, I'll still try to get some of it out and you want to spray down through all these passages passages that you see here you want to spray down through them and on this you want to spray through the adjustment screw and when you spray through this adjustment here it's going to spray out somewhere inside the carburetor here one of these passages or ports 
and anytime you're spraying carpet cleaner, always have your safety glasses on because you never know where it's going to spray back out. And believe me, you do not want carpet cleaner in your eye. It's about the worst thing you can get in your eye. And the main thing to look for when you take one of these apart is to make sure that this is uh, clean. As you see, you can see all the way through it. And yeah, make sure all these holes are clean, all these passages. I know it's hard to see, but you can actually see through those. And you want to clean all this that real good. If anything is plugged up on this, the carburetor is not going to be getting the proper fuel. If it's clogged up on the end, it ain't going to be getting any fuel because this is what uh, picks up the fuel from the bowl. And uh, so if anything is clogged up here, your engine ain't going to be running right. If any of the passages are clogged up where the mixture and adjustment screws go, then you're going to be having problems there too. You want to back this off quite a bit. But when you put it back in there, there's no chance of uh, it uh, hitting anything. I'm going to put this in right now where you get an idea of where it uh, comes out at. Which is uh, why it was hanging up when I first took it apart. It goes all the way through there like that. So, like I said, this is a very reliable carburetor. As you can see, there's, the main reason why is because there ain't a whole lot to them. Uh, very simple design. And it's reliable, too. So we'll go ahead and put it back together. Like I said, I'd recommend replacing this gasket, but I don't have one right now, so I'm not I'm not going to. I'd like to. I don't like putting it back together like that. I guess you could put a very thin film of a former gasket or something on there, but I don't like doing that on carburetors because if anything gets on the inside, it's going to clog something up. Usually, get all these bolts back in it. Get that pretty snug with that, and just a little tiny turn with the wrench. And you know you're getting it snug enough. And in this case, to help keep it from leaking, until I can get a gasket for it. If I thought about it, I would have ordered it before I started working on it. And if you're buying a rebuild kit for it, it'll probably come with a needle valve and seat. And uh, you should get all this with it to rebuild it because it's really all you, there is to it. Most of the time you can just clean these. And that's true with just about any small engine. With this, you got to line it up straight. You'll feel it go, go through just like that. And don't go crazy with this, just barely snug it. If you get it real tight, you're just asking for problems. And you have to take it apart again and clean it later on. You just barely want to snug it when it bottoms out. That's all you need. You can see, it's not very tight at all because there's no need for it being tight. And you do have a little rubber seal or gasket on this. It would probably come with the kit as well, and I'd recommend changing it if you got a new one. You will put that in there. This is 7 sixteenths. Just barely snug that. And run your, your, run your mixture screw all the way in until it bottoms out. It just barely bottoms out. You want to turn it out two turns. It's a half, one, one and a half and two. And this one was out just a little bit more. So I'm going to take it another half a turn because I remember it sticking out more than that. This probably would have been easier to put in before I put the carburetor back together. But again, it's going to be the same thing for it. Just turn it out one and a half turns. A half a turn, one turn, one and a half, and two. And we'll go ahead and take the next one. I'm pretty sure this engine was wanting to run a rich. It didn't want to run lean. And that's uh, really all there is to these. And like I said, uh, for adjusting it, I'm not going to show it on the video. I'm just following the video on the one piece that I referenced earlier in the video. I'll put it in there again just for reference. And uh, that'll get you 
that will get you uh, enough information on how to uh, adjust one of these, which ain't really hard once you get started on it. And uh, your new kit will come with a carburetor gasket, new gasket for this. And a simple trick to clean one of these is to take a file and file it like this and resurface it. It works uh, really good or something like this. If it looks like this, it should be all right. But, uh, just another tip there. And this is your choke. So, well, guys, if you got any questions or comments about this type of carburetor, feel free to leave me a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I'm going to go put this back on. You just get the two bolts, and you're done. So we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.